the subject this week. And uh, I know that uh, some of you are just coming this night. Uh, can I see the hands of the people from Rome? Can I see their hands? Oh, some people are shy. They so up their hands. If you don't have to be from Rome, you can shift. You don't have a group. Okay, uh, those who are from Essen. Uh, so this week we are studying, our theme is the day of atonement. And uh, we study on Sunday, we saw what is the problem. And we didn't finish, but then on Monday we saw more deeply. And we found out that there, are, there, there is a problem. And, uh, and this problem cannot be solved if our hearts reject crime until uh, we really humble ourselves before the Lord, we cannot know who Jesus is. Now, we really saw that those people who are self-righteous, they actually, they cannot even see the beauty of Jesus. Last night, we found out that there are many things that this should cover up. Yeah, we look good, we have on Sabbath, and whatever we do, we look so good because we do certain things for the church. I'm there, there is no interest in what we are doing in the church. Do you know that? No. Yeah. Do you want to hear the truth, or you want me to lie to you? <coughs> Please, tell me, you choose. What do you, want me, what do you mean, what do you want me to tell you? Something that you like to hear, or something that you want, you know that this is something that God wants us to hear? Because I'm telling my brothers and sisters, there are many things that we are doing in the church. God is not interested in with that. Because God wants to see something deep in our heart. The mouth, what they speak. We can, you know, Jesus said, you love with the mouth. Mouth is cheap. It's, it's really cheaper to say, I love you, Lord. We love you, Lord. We love. It's cheaper to say that. We don't know what you mean to say that. Love is not something that just feel it like that. Now, we love with the lips, but something needs to happen in our heart, my brothers and sisters. And I believe Jesus is coming very soon. And, 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 and majority, not just majority, all of us, not majority. If you read the Bible, all of us right now, we are in deep sleep. And I found out that while we are sleeping, the, 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 the beast of Revelation, the Bible says that beast looks like a leopard. Last time when I checked, a leopard likes to hide in the night. How many of you remember that when I said that last time? <laughs> when people are really sleeping, that's the time that they, the evil force of darkness are really working hard to make sure that no one can stand up. Because at the time, that he actually, the leopard, if you saw the leopard, a leopard likes to hide in the night. I will not tell you about the, about the beast tonight. But what I mean is, brothers and sisters, we are in the verge of this earth history. The end of everything. And I don't care what you feel or how I feel, but really, I, what I want is what God says. Because right now, there are many people saying many things. But my question is, is what they are saying what is true? Because right now, there are so many, many of us, instead of follow God, we are follow men. And we are in trouble, my friends. Jesus is getting ready to come. It's coming. And the Bible says, even at the door. When we say even at the door, how is at the door? You know, many people don't know how to explain that verse. Because even at the door means just there. Right? This is Matthew 24. It says, even near, even at the door. What does it mean? The answer is in the next verse. Explain what I mean to be at the door. We need to allow the Bible to speak to our brothers and sisters. When we start to put our idea and our own suggestion in the Word of God, we'll be lost. Because all the instruction, everything that we need for our salvation, my friends, is here in the Bible. I hear many people, oh, we need the Greek and him. Really, you need the Greek and him for you to be saved? Oh, I need the Hebrew and Greek for me to understand. Really. 
The Bible says the Holy Spirit shall guide you in all the truth. Amen? Now we need to allow the Holy Spirit to guide us. Because unless we let the Holy Spirit to guide us, if we are filled with our own idea, we cannot understand the word of God. This will happen the same thing that happened to the Pharisees. They knew so much. Nicodemus, God told him, Verily, verily, I say unto you, unless you are born again, the word and the spirit. He was, he was, he was acting like he doesn't know what Jesus was talking about. What do you mean, man? But my friends, listen to this. Now, I want you to open your Bible. And let's open our heart. Now remember last night we found last night we studied about the day of atonement. Let me check our time. Listen carefully. These people, they give me time. This is uh, 744. Now listen carefully. There is a limit. <laughs> they give me a limit. They say you have to speak only 45 minutes. That was the, that's what they give me. Whatever the program starts, uh, 45 minutes, that's the time that I have to speak. But listen carefully, friend. There is really a limit. There is a limit for all of us. Do you know that? In this plan that God is bringing people to say, listen, not, not everybody will accept this message. Justice was in the time of Noah, Noah priest for how many years? 120 years. He preached, how many people believe in the message of Noah? Only his family. You know, if you study the history, even today I will study that. I found out how many billion of the population are in the world right now. How many billion? How many billion? Seven billion. You know, I found out that in the time of now, the, the, the world reached seven billion population. And Jesus says, as it was in the time of now, it will happen again. You know, I, 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 as I started the, the, the subject, I was, I was taking a look on the things and I saw all these things. Amen. I, I was amazed, really. Seven billion is the last generation. That means we are in the verge of everything. You, go, you study the economy. You study the political power. You study everything that's going on right now in our world. Everything shown that we are in the end, but as a people, we are asleep. And we are waiting for someone to stand in the pulpit to tell us, hey, it's time for us, it's time for you to get ready, start compromise, start doing this, wake up, start dress properly, doing this and this, change your life. And I'm telling you, if you are waiting for that time or a past to stand here to tell you about this crisis, that time will never come. Some people are waiting, they think the Pope will tell them, oh, this is the National Sunday Law will pass, I'll get ready. The Pope will never tell you that. My brothers and sisters, God might send a message, though many will not believe. God might send a message to his people. And you are his people. And God loves you so much. He said, I'm not willing to see you be lost. But remember this. We don't have time to study everything. Not even this week. But I'm telling you, friend, there is a limit. Thank you, Adel, to this point. Give us limit. There is a really limit. For everything, there is a limit. And we also have a lot of limit. This message is a limit. There is a limit also. Now please open your Bible. Let's see what the Bible says. Now, last night we saw. Okay, let me open the bit. Let's see a bit. Now we saw this that this this storm is nothing else but the national Sunday law that will be enforced. It's not be something that people will plead to you and say, oh, maybe you should do or not. No, no, no. It will be enforcement. We found out that we need to set our house in order. When Ezekiah, that king, who brought revival and reformation in Israel, and Judah, he was about to die. The Bible says, before you die, set your house in order. Now some of us, we are, our sickness is at death. And God is saying, set your house in order. His sickness was to death. This was a deadly sickness. But the king cried, Cry. Now that means we need to cry for God to heal us. What do you say? We need to cry for God to heal us, brothers and sisters. I'm telling you, I didn't, I didn't come here to give you something that you like. I'm dead. I'm, I'm going to tell you, we are not, you know, the message of God, if you read the Bible, you see that the Bible is a message of warning for His people. And this warning is not a condemnation, but it's salvation. When God gives a message, it's to save us. Doesn't matter how much strength is the message, but it's to say this, my brother and sisters. Now listen to this. Now we saw this. We saw, we saw that there is something for us to do. Yes or no? 
Now I'm going to show you very much in this shop. Now please, before we go to Levete, read this shop. Read, read this, uh, th this verse. Let's read together. Second Peter chapter uh, 1, verse 10. Now I'm going to show you something in Second Peter chapter 1. Well, we need to move quickly. I have to move quickly because if we have to move quickly, if we are Bible students, then we have to rush. Second Peter chapter 1, the Bible says verse 3. Let's pick up verse 3. Second Peter chapter 1, let's pick up verse 3. Are you there? Let me know by saying. Then the word of God says, uh, according to his divine word. Divine power. Is is God has power? Yes or no? Yes. No, please. Some people, uh, I don't know. I, does God has power? Yes or no? Yes. Some people think that God only has power to forgive your sins. As long as I sin and I say, Lord, forgive me. As long as I forgive me, it's okay. My friend, God has power also to, to give us. He also has power for us to overcome sin. Now, in the blood of Jesus, there's no need, there's no need sin for forgiveness. There is power. And if I say, we should be free from the world. Passion in the world. Pleasure and all this. He said, there is power in the blood of Jesus. That power is not just for forgiveness. Because right now, many people only want the forgiveness. Not that they, uh, I get forgiven, I'm fine. No, God wants us to bring us to a place that there is no sin anymore. And we, we have been not taught these things in our churches. I'm telling you this because I know. Okay? And I know that. And there is a reason why there is something like that. He said, according to his divine power, has given unto us how much? How much thing God has given to us? Oh, look at the Bible. Oh, okay. Has given unto us how many? Oh. All things pertain well. Right. You know, everything that you let you listen to everybody says. Some people are thinking it's because of their power they came to study many people. Some people are thinking because they have this and this, but they have a cry in this, they think it's belongs to the Bible say all things are given unto us. Things pertain to life and they pertain to God. Yes, God has been holy. That means if we want to be holy, if we connect ourselves to Jesus, we will become the holy. There is no such a thing, you know, brothers and sisters, we study that. When we are sinning, we are not of Jesus. You know that? When I'm sinning, I'm not belong to Jesus. I belong to the death. The Bible says that. Whosoever commits sin is of the devil. For the devil sins from the beginning. For this purpose, the Son of God was manifest to destroy the work of the devil. What's the work of the devil? Sin. But God has power to do something in us. And He say, according to His divine power is given unto us a, a what? This is your Bible. What? Nothing pertain to life and nothing pertain to God. Now let's read. Ah, uh, the next verse. He say, uh, okay, all things pertain to life. What is this? To God. Through the knowledge of Him that is what? Call us to glory and future. Verse 4 say, whereby, what I mean whereby, my friend, uh, my friend, uh, what I mean whereby? Um, okay, it's okay. <laughs> whereby mean by which? Okay, let's read. So that we can understand. King James, he says, Whereby, that means by which our Lord are given unto us, praise God, exceeding great, no, this is not just say great, he say exceeding great and what? Precious promise that by this promise, I wonder, you know, God is not a man that can lie. Every promise of God is true. It's for you to claim, it's for you to claim the promise. It says, we see according to his mind, power is given unto us. What? Oh, what is this? An exceedingly great precious promise that by this promise he might be what? By the taker of the divine word. Nature. Nature. And he escaped the corruption which is in the world through how? Through us. Now we found out that God wants to make us partaker of his divine nature. My question is, what is our nature again? What is the nature of God? So that means God wants to make us like Him. And we studied that last night and the last the night before that we found out that we need to look like what? Like Jesus. We found out that for us to look like Jesus, we gotta go into this sanctuary. But I'm gonna show you. Let's jump from verse uh, 10. Verse 10 says, Wherefore, the rather brethren, give diligence to make your calling and your election sure. 
Why we need to give diligence and to make our calling and election to Allah? And after what? Tell me what? The answer in the verse. Everything that the Bible, you, you can have a question, there is the answer in the verse. Therefore, or wherefore. What, what does that mean, wherefore? Conclusion. Give diligence to make your calling. Don't give currency. Because the Bible says, for men are called. And how many people are choosing? Why? The answer in this verse. Because some people are not giving diligence to the call. There's a result, even though they are called, you know, you can go to church and do all you can do, but unless you are giving diligence to what God called you, you will be lost. But God say, I want to save you. Amen? Now the Bible says, give, give diligence to make your calling and election sure for, let's read together, let's see the without it, for me because, for if what? If what? If we preach this thing, that what he said? For if we teach this thing, that what he said? That what he said, you might be saying, you teach this thing? What he said? Mm -hmm. If you do. Huh. Do means, that, that means there is something for us to do. The Bible says, you shall fall seven times. That what he said there? No. Never fall. How is possible? I talk to many of my friends, and you know, they tell me there's no such thing of never fall because David fall, Abraham fall, Adam fall. Okay, we can say everyone fall. But let's read, let me ask you a question. Is, is David our example to follow? Is David our example to follow? How many, how many people think that David is our example for us to follow? The, the brother here think, the brother they also think. Very good. We need to know about it, friends. Okay. Now, my, my other question. Okay. Do you think Abraham is our example for us to follow? Okay. Thank you very much. Okay. The Bible says, but we study that. Who is the example that we should follow? We should not follow men. When David fought with a woman, he, he didn't have any example. He didn't have anything right that was saying, oh, somebody fall, so I should not follow that path. So when I say, oh, David fall, you know what I'm saying, I can see him because David was a sin. That was, that's not the teaching of the Bible. The Bible said, that's why our example, I'm going to go read in the second, in first Peter, we found out that Jesus is our word. Example to follow. Never take the place of Jesus, take with somebody else. You know, even sister wife, she's not our example of father. She's the prophet of the Lord. Respectfully, we know that she prophesies and she says many things for us. But does not mean that we should what? Even her never say, follow me. She said, follow who? That's why her right is what? To testify about Jesus. It's to lift it up Jesus, not herself. It's to lift it up Jesus. So that everyone should look what? To Jesus. When you start looking to men, you're going to fall. When you start taking example just because it's a pastor, it's Adriano, and indeed that, then I'm going to follow that. I'm, I'm telling my friend, I'm not an example. Though we have to live hard. Remember this. I will say this. Because many people say, many people try to manufacture. So let me try to be good just because I'm a, I'm a theologian student. So that people can say, I'm actually a theologian student. My friend, the righteousness of God cannot be manufactured. Until there is this real connection with Jesus, you cannot have everything that you are going to do is to be pharisaical thing. What God really wants is a real connection. There are many people who can do everything, preach and teach and do all that they can do, but I'm telling you, this does not mean that they are connected to Jesus. I wish to show you the quotation that talk about that. Sinners can do many things, powerful things, amazing things, but still they are strangers to Jesus. Now, we want to know Jesus. Amen? Amen. I want to know Jesus. I don't know about you, my friends. I want Jesus. I know Jesus. And I found out that no man can help me. And I found out that I need to distrust myself. Because if I trust myself, I'm not going It was when David started looking to himself that he fought. But if we fix our eyes upon Jesus, the Bible says there is any power of transformation because when we look, the Bible says, but behold, we become changed. When we look, we become changed. 
But if we take our, our eyes off from Jesus, it's very easy because we are going to see discouragement and we are going to be disappointed because our self is going to discourage us. We found out for us to look like Jesus, we got to go into the sanctuary. That's why there is a day of atonement this week. But the day of atonement didn't start this week. The day of atonement started in 1844. Our day of atonement. And uh, somebody should ask, why is it that the day, the day, of, the day of atonement back then was only what? One day. But why is it this takes so long? There is a reason for that, and we are going to take a look on this tonight. Now, go to Leviticus. Go to Leviticus. Go to Leviticus 23. Oh, no, Leviticus 16. Leviticus 16. Now, we found out that the day of atonement, there is something that we need to do. We found out the purpose why God gave us this message, which is the third. Many people don't preach about the third message. You know, there are people who even say, don't preach about the Pope. I have heard from people who are Adventists. They are telling me, oh no, we, 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 uh, we, they are also good people, they are doing good I'm telling you, friends, when you start looking the man of sin in that way, you're going to wander after the beast with the world. The Bible said, all the world, the Bible said that. And I saw another beast. And I said, one, when one of his head, like one head, Revelation 30 verse 3, one, one of his head was, was wounded to death. And his deadly wound did what? Heal. And all the world wandered after the beast. There are many things right now. You know those people love the, the world? Those people love the songs and the music of Jason. The movie of Hollywood. I mean, let this again, people. If you are watching Hollywood things, product, production, or whatever it is, if you are watching this music that you are watching over there, I, I'm going to tell you now. I, mean, I have to be very honest with you. You're going to wander after the beast. Because the Bible says that. The Bible says, do not love the world. If any man love the world, I mean the love of the Father is not in him. Now, if we don't have the love of God, where that means we have a love, but that love is not for God. We are giving our love for something else. Now, if I embrace the things of the world, when the when the national assembly will be forced, when the beast, when everyone who worship the beast, just like in Revelation Daniel 3, everyone who worship the beast, even though you are under this, but if you are embracing the world, you end up worship the beast. You wander after the beast. Now, friend, this is not the time for us to wander after the beast. This is the time for us to go into the most holy place and understand what is the day of atonement. Because we need to do what? Now, let's read this again. He says, I saw, I also saw, that many do not realize. He said, many do not realize that what? They must be. Now, when you say must be, be something big, you know, they're not, they're not there to be, right? Be. They do not know what that to be. Okay, be. And I said, in order to live where? Well, in the sight of the Lord, without the high priest in the sanctuary. Through what? I mean, we study already that there, is a, there will be a time of trouble. It's not just a national assembly, but it will be greater than that. And then it says, those who receive the seal of, of the living God, remember this, are protected in a time of trouble. These people must reflect the image of Jesus fully. And we saw yesterday, last night, and also the other night, that Jesus, no God in his mouth. Jesus was a sinless man. No sin. The Bible said, no sin. And he said, he is our example that we should find. My question is, we have a lot of sin, yes or no? Do we have sin, yes or no? Yes. yes. We have sin. Now, but the Bible says, there is a way how to get rid of sin. And that is, that's why God gave us, not just the sanctuary, just a part, but he gave us everything. He gave us what is called the day of atonement. Now, let's move on. Because we started with this, we found out Jesus we need to learn to know ourselves. This is the most important thing. Because some people say, oh, I'm good, I'm good, I don't need you, oh, I'm, I'm okay, as long as I do my best. But he say actually, he say, yeah, he says, he says, the young have many lessons to learn. But the most important thing that they need to learn, this is mentioned to young people, is to know themselves. Now, there is a danger if you don't know yourself. Then he says, Many see much, they may see much to admire in the back of Christ. They say, oh, Jesus was a sinful, uh, was a sinless man. So, do you think it's just there for us, what? 
to be entertained. Oh, just roll. Oh, wow, that's amazing. No, there is a, a reason why God actually gave us this. He says, but true love for, for Him can never be one. Right. Can never dwell in the one. In the heart of self righteous. Now, please, read with me this. He said, not to see. That's very interesting. What, in other words, I say, when you don't see, he says, not to see our own deformity is not to see the beauty of us. You want to see the beauty of Jesus? I want to see the beauty of Jesus. That's why we need to distress ourselves. He said, if I, if I will look to myself as if I had something good in me, I will never see the value of Jesus. Mm -hmm. In other words, I'm a self-righteous. Unless I realize that I need Jesus and I'm too bad that I need the Savior, I will never see his beauty. Many people don't talk about the beauty of Jesus because they cannot see him. Many people don't talk even when they talk about Jesus to others. They don't talk, they don't see, they don't know who Jesus is. They don't see how Jesus is beautiful. You know Jesus is attractive. I always say, have you ever been attracted to a woman? Guys, I'm talking about guys. Yes. yes. Guys, right? You have been attracted to a woman. Yes. And also ladies also have been attracted to guys, right? But I'm gonna say to everyone that you have seen and you've been attracted to them, all of them are not beautiful. Yes. But Jesus, I'm telling my brothers and sisters, Jesus is beautiful. The Bible says, anyone ever read about the beauty of Jesus in the Bible? Jesus is beautiful. When oh, listen, in the day that you see Jesus, I don't think you're gonna have a friend. You're going to desire only Him, nothing else. You're going to sing a song, nothing between my soul and my Savior, nothing prevent me from what? From His blessing. Clean, let what? Clean that way. Make it clean. So that what? I may receive the blessing of His face. But the Bible, that's a song. The Bible says, Jesus is beautiful. The reason why we don't love Jesus so much is because we love ourselves. Or perhaps we love something else. There's only two. no middle ground. No middle ground. Okay, no middle ground. So not to see that, we will lose the beauty of Jesus. And I say, not to see the mark contrast between Christ and ourselves is not to see, it's not what? It's mm -hmm. not to know ourselves. But here says the most important thing that we need to know what? To do is what? Is to know ourselves. So what makes us to fail to know ourselves is because we are thinking that actually if you continue reading this book, that's part 10, if you continue, there's a part that says that even there are people who dare to say that I'm Christ. They are thinking they are Jesus. We are not yet their friend. But God gave us a basis which is called the most holy place or the sanctuary. You see, the Laodicea talk the same thing. God said, you are, you are what? Rich, whatever, miserable, poor, blind, naked. But they say, that does not represent my case. I do not accept the message you are bringing. I am doing my best. Just because I'm rich, I'm doing my best? Just because I'm seeing and giving time, open, I'm doing my best? I'm telling you, my friend. There are certain things that we are doing, actually, it's deceiving us, it makes us worse. It makes us worse. It doesn't allow, doesn't help us with the real view of Jesus. Because we are thinking that thing is good. He says, He says, I'm doing my best. I believe, not the, I believe the truth. But the Holy Spirit says that you have the effect of character. My brother and sister, we need Jesus. And, and just listen, Jesus is coming very soon. I told you, no one will sin will go to heaven. Have you ever read Step to Christ chapter 2? The chapter says sinners need Christ. There is a quotation that says, if you bring a sinner to heaven, hmm. in the condition that it is, heaven will be a torture to you. You desire to come to heaven. That's why God is giving us this so that we may understand what we need to do. Now, let's see what we need to do. Now, are you, in, are you already in a, 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 what's this a book that I gave you? Leviticus. Leviticus 16. Let me be 60. Let's move on. Now we found out that Jesus works up here, but does not finish here. Here Jesus did something called brought us. But Jesus must bring us to a place where we must look like him. That, that place is called the most holy place. Every church are in an outer court. Listen carefully. Every church are here. Every church, Catholic, Protestant, Presbyterian church, Evangelical churches, all of them, they believe in Jesus. They don't know anything about him. 
by Seventh-day Adventists, we found out, we found out that the Seventh-day Adventists, they need to know this more deeply. Now, let me show you what we need to know. Okay, we found out that God actually want to what? Want to restore the image of his maker in the human, many, many kinds. Now, what is the image of God? Is the image of God in perfect or perfect? When man was created, was created perfect or imperfect? Perfect. Why? Because Genesis 1 26 says he was made, God made him in the East, in his own world. Mm -hmm. So that means man was perfect. But something happened in man. What was the thing that marred the perfection of man? Please say it aloud. What is that? So only one thing, not many things, only one. Be careful when a scholar starts to teach you certain things to strength. You know, I found out there are many scholars who are not converted, and I don't want to listen to them. Now the Bible says it was sin that was marred. So if this sin that marred, God for him to bring us back to what? Because he says, this is education. The purpose of the work of redemption is to restore what? He made the image of his name to bring him back where? To perfection in each world. Some people say, what perfection are you talking about? Greek perfection, imperfection, total perfection, total perfection. What kind of perfection are you talking about? Listen, what a perfection I'm talking about here is forget about evil. You know, evil and Greek. Let some people use that, okay? But for us common people, let's understand what this biblical perfection is. Biblical perfection. Simple. When God created man, it was perfect. What was the thing that marred the perfection of man? Sin. So we don't need to go to Hebrew to understand this. What was that? Sin. So in order for God to bring man back to perfection, what God must do? Take sin out. Because that's what the thing that marred the image. So this is the whole purpose of Jesus coming to the earth. The Bible says, John 1 and 29, Behold the Lamb of God. Which that's all. Until sin is out, the work of Jesus is not done. First John 3, verse 5. And he no. You don't get. You know that the, he was one first to take away our sins. Now, friends, the purpose of redemption is to bring us to a point that we must look like Jesus. Does the Bible say that? Yes. If you read the Hebrew, if you read the Hebrew sins, I don't have time to read that. You see that it's the same thing. The Bible says, let us leave the the principle of the doctrine of Christ and let us move on into perfection. And he's explained why. Because those who accept now, they, when they will accept Jesus, we should not start in the outer court. We should move on. But this move on is more clear in the sanctuary. Now, we found out that God must reproduce what? The image of God must be reproduced what? In humanity. Now, we saw some people give excuse. Oh, no, 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 no. He said, it is this excuse that lead to sin. He said, there is no excuse for sin. So if there is no excuse for sin, that means there is something that God gave us to help us. And that thing is called the Santa. Lord, he says, Santa actually is jubilating when we what? When you hear certain people say what? Give an excuse of the promise of their current. Now, we already saw this. I, I, I hate to pass this, but I have to pass this. I have to pass this. I, we found out there is a great work and a little time. And we saw that the great work, the little time is because the National Sunday Law is very near. And we need to get ready before National Sunday Law. We studied this. And we saw what is the great work. The, work, the great work is that we must look like Jesus. And we saw that how Jesus looked like. That's a good question. Yes or no? How Jesus looked like? We saw that in the first Peter chapter 2, verse 21. We saw how Jesus looked like. We studied this last time. And this is the part of Jesus do no work. Sin. Now, we need to understand this, brothers and sisters, because this is fine. Now, friends, I have to pass this. I have to pass this. We found out that there are two things that we need to unite. He says, the Savior, I want to read this. The Savior took upon himself what? The infirmity of humanity. Human. He lived a sinless life. Why? Why he lived? So that we can say, oh, oh, he lived a oh, 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 that was good. There is the answer. Why did Jesus live the sinless, sinless life? So that men might know what? what? <laughs> might know what? <laughs> so, because right now we are afraid. We say, no, how is it possible that I can do that? Because you are looking at yourself. The power 
for you to do so is from Jesus, not your power. It's Jesus who has a power to, the Bible says, now unto him he is able to do what? The thing is, we don't believe in the Bible anymore. But the Bible says he is able to keep us from falling. It says that because of, our, of the weakness, it says that, that they did not fear that because of the weakness of human nature, they could not what? Overcome. Christ came to make what? Partake of the divine nature. And his life declares that humanity combined with divinity does not sin. That means the reason why we fall, anytime when I fall, it means I was disconnected to God. Because if there is a connection, the Bible says, if any man be in, not outside of Christ, is a new creature. And all things pass away. Everything about that man who entered in contact with Jesus has become new. Now we saw this. We saw, we saw that this day of atonement, we saw that the sanctuary is the foundation and the center of it. I don't have time for this. We saw this. We saw this. We saw these two things. Amen? Now, we saw the crushing of the serpent. Amen? Amen. Oh, some people don't like to say that. I, I, want, I want to repeat again. We saw the crushing of what? Who represents the serpent? Say. Now, we, because unless we understand this and this, we cannot see the real picture. Now, let's see this. Now, the crushing of the serpent. Amen? Amen. Amen. Oh, why, why do you not say amen? If you don't like the devil, if you crush. Now, okay, let's go again. Okay, okay, I'll give you one chance. But I know some people want the devil to live forever, right? I want the devil to die. Now, let's read again. Okay, watch, watch. Amen. Okay, the Bible says the seven will be one. Will be one. Now, Genesis chapter 3, verse 15, what the Bible says? I'll put enmity between what? D. Who is D? Seven. And the woman that seed and her seed. It shall bruise what? And thou shalt bruise what? Now, how many people are bruised there? Who is the seed? We already said last night. Who is the seed? Who is the servant? Now, that means Jesus, the seed of the woman, is going to bruise this what? The head of. And Satan must also lose the head of, I mean, the, the heel of, of Jesus. My question is, last night we already saw that there is a relationship here and here. The scapegoat in the sanctuary, it, by the end of the day of atonement, let's read that verse, let's read that verse, Look at it. Leviticus, 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 because this is our study for tonight, Leviticus. The Bible says in Leviticus 16, this is the day of atonement, please open your Bible. So that we can uh, visit Leviticus 16, the whole chapter, talk about the day of atonement. Now, please tell me, the day of atonement. Let's read together. I think he's running already. Leviticus 16, verse 20. Verse 20 talk about the end of the day of atonement. It say, when he had made the end, what? The end of the Lord, the holy place, and the, and, the, and the tabernacle of the congregation, and the altar, and he shall bring what? The life goal. Now, there was two goals. One is of the Lord, one of what? The scapegoat. Verse 21. 21 said, Aaron, who is Aaron represent? Aaron is the high priest. Represent who? Jesus in the sanctuary, not on earth, but the sanctuary in heaven. The Bible says, Aaron shall do what? Shall do what? Shall lay both of his hands upon one. Upon the life of And confess over him how much of the iniquity, I mean the iniquity, all the iniquity of the children of Israel. How much of transgression? Oh! How much of sin? Oh. oh! And putting them upon the feet of the goat. That what he said? Mm. Putting them upon the head. Sending them to the wind. Then we studied that. We found out that there is something here. Now we know that the one who Christ is Jesus, but there is a relationship here. And I show you, I show you, and, Amen. and we saw that Jesus actually died on the cross. Yes or no? Yes. Now my question is, my friend. Read that back. Read, read that back. Read that back. Roman, Roman. Read, read that back. Roman, Roman. Roman, Roman 16. Now, my question is, when the head of Satan was crushed, can, can somebody tell me? When the head of Satan was crushed, those people who know already, don't tell. I want to hear some other people. When the head of Satan was crushed, tell me quickly. Cross. Huh? Cross. On the cross. Okay. You know, throughout our life, we learn it that way. That the head of serpent 
was crushed where? On the cross. But let me show you this. I want to read this before we answer your question. It said, deny self. The angel said, deny self. You must step fast. Some of us have, have them come to get what? The two. An advanced step by step. And every step we are what? Taking, give what? Strength to what? To the next. But now, the time is almost what? Finished. Are we together? The time is almost finished. That what we have what? Been what? Ian Levy. Now, how old are you? <laughs> now, because he said, what we have learned years, we must learn how. Man. We have to learn how in a few months. Then he said, they will also, talking about us, they will also what? have to much. Are you saying everything that you learn is just nothing? And perhaps it's wrong. I'm going to tell you tonight that there is something that we have learned is wrong. And he says, he says, they have much to unlearn and much to learn. Now, friend, do you think we have something to unlearn? Yes. My brother said the crushing of the serpent was on the cross. I'm going to ask you a question. When you start, how many of you have killed a serpent? Please repeat. Let's, let's, let's move quickly. Because I have to ask questions so that you can see. You can memorize this. How many of you have killed a serpent? A serpent. How big is that? I have killed a big serpent. Okay, now. Big serpent. What about you? Uh, what about you? Big serpent like this? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how, how big is like a serpent, but anyway, you know, when you kill a serpent, where you going to strike? In the hill. Please say in the hill. You know, in Africa, my friend, if you strike a serpent in the hill, you are going to die. The serpent will come against you and kill you. Now, my friend, listen to me. When you strike a serpent, you strike where? Now you will see that even Paul, when he understand this, he himself said, Amen. Now listen, listen, the Bible says, the Bible says that the serpent cannot be crushed. Now, friends, if Jesus crushed the serpent on the cross, why is it that the devil is so real? Now please, please, think and intelligent. Because I don't know where you get that, but tell me, why is it that the devil is so real? Why there is so much sins and pornography and fornication, adulterers and all these bad things that is so real that some of us, we cannot even get rid of it, of, the, of it. The reason is because the devil is very alive. And even the devil himself, he laughs at us when we believe something like this. Now to believe something like that, this is cool. Now let's see what the Bible says. Go to your Bible. Amen. Amen. Now. Amen. Amen. Now, this is. Now, let's see. Let's see what happens. Romans 16. Read Romans 16. The Bible says in Romans 16. Let's see whether the serpent, I mean the head, or, or, or Jesus crushed the serpent on the cross. Now, let's read Romans 16. That's the last chapter of this book. Romans 16, verse 20, the Bible said, And the God of peace shall bruise. Who, who, who is going to be bruised? Shall bruise Satan underwear. Your feet shortly. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you. Paul himself said, Amen. Amen. But you are afraid to say Amen. <laughs> amen. When Paul saw that the head of, of the seven will be crushed, he said, Amen. Say amen. Now, notice this, friends. Now, my question is many people, please be careful. You have to trust what the Bible says. Don't trust man. Don't listen to man. Now, Many, I've learned throughout my life that the serpent was crossed on the cross. And then there was this man, I think back home, he asked the man who was teaching this. He said, how come? But how come? He said, no, uh, how come the devil is alive still? He said, no, no, because you know when you kill a serpent, the, the tail and, the, and the, the, the body is like moving and throwing down people down. And, you know, only a person who doesn't really think can accept that. If you know how to kill a serpent, he said, no, leave, I leave it with you, but I know how to kill a serpent. Now the Bible says, now, the, what is the tense, please? What is the tense of the verse? Past, present, future. What is the tense? Future. Yeah. Because it says, it shall. Yeah. Now it shall bruise. To bruise is to crush. Now if it shall bruise, that says to bruise. Now, if it shall bruise, notice this. This is the meaning of Greek. That's true. The meaning of Greek of that word bruise is what? Sound trap. So our trouble is that the word is what? To crush. Because when you crush a serpent, you finish the serpent. 
Now my brother and sister, let's meet everybody. Let's think. Are you intelligent? Are you intelligent? Yes. Oh, press it. Press it. You are intelligent. Now, intelligent. The intelligent people know that when you press a serpent, it's fit. Now, let's see. Let's see. Paul, how this would make sense, Paul, under inspiration of the Holy Spirit, putting something there in the future? How you can answer that question? Now, friend, listen to me. The head, for you to know this, we got to go into the sanctuary. The sanctuary can tell us when the head actually truly will be Christ. And you can connect the sanctuary through this, and you see, oh, yes. Now, my friend, listen to me. The crushing is not yet. Now, my question is, so what happened in the cross? What happened in the cross? Go to Isaiah 53. Isaiah 53. That's the prophecy about the Messiah. Remember this? Remember this. Some, somebody was crushed on the cross. I wonder who is that. And no one talk about that. Isaiah 53. Isaiah 53. The Bible says Isaiah 53. Isaiah 53, who is talking about that? Tell me. Jesus. Jesus. That's the, the, the death of Jesus. Now, Isaiah 53, let's see what the Bible says about this. Let me know by saying amen. amen. Verse 3. And he did what? He is despised. Rejected of men, a man of God, so acquainted with grief. Now let's read verse 4. Surely he has what? Oh, how I want. Do you like that Jesus bore your grief? I like that. And I'm telling you, no one here can bore his own grief. He said what? Surely he has bore our grief and carried what? Our sorrows. Yet we did what? Esteem him as a stress, smart of God and afflicted. Now please, pay attention, verse 5. Look at your Bible. Let's read verse 5. The Bible says verse 5. But he was what? Wounded. Not like the beast. But he said he was wounded for what? So the reason why Jesus was wounded is because of what? Our transgression. Now the Bible says, not just wounded, but he also was what? Bruised. Are you saying Jesus was bruised? Now who is talking about here? Is Jesus. Say that on Jesus. So the Bible is telling us that the one who was bruised on the cross was not Satan. The one who was bruised on the cross was Jesus himself. My question is, who bruised Jesus? How he did it? How he did it? Now I know you never heard about this, you never heard about this, I know that. But my question is, how he did it? By using sin. I'm going to show you that sin was the thing that the devil used to bruise not the head, but the head of Jesus. And, the, and Jesus is going to use our sins to bruise not the heel, but the head of Satan. I'm going to show you. Notice this. This is sin. This is. Notice this. The bruising will be sin, the bruising. I'm going to show you very, very soon. And there is also bruising here in the day of atonement. In the day of atonement, the priest takes all the sins you know, in the sanctuary and he bring it in the outer court and go over to the scapegoat and confess over him all the sins. And the devil, I mean, when the lamb is sent well, I mean, when the gold is sent to the wilderness. Listen carefully, friends. The thing that bruised the head of Satan is sin. It was sins, our sins, that the devil used to bruise the world, the heel of Jesus. Why I'm saying this? Because Genesis 3, verse 15, talk about that one very clearly. Let's read it. Let's read this. Jesus died on the cross, which was not him. The work of Jesus died on the cross, but does not end on the cross. Mm. Now, notice this. Let me please look at this. Look at this. Look at this very carefully. It says, Could Satan, this is selected measures, what? 256, paragraph 1. Could Satan in the least? Particular, having tempted Christ to sin, he would have what? Bruise the Savior head. Are you serious? So Satan would bruise the Savior head if Jesus would what? Sin. sin. Now let's continue. Let's continue. Let's continue. He says, as it was, he could only touch what? His has the head of Christ been touched? The hope of what? Human grace will be what? Perish. And he says, divine wrath would what? Have come upon Christ as it came upon what? Listen, the, the sin, sin is the plan of redemption is a serious business. 
In other words, the life of Jesus was a stake. Mm. But the Bible says, Jesus overcome. Praise God. Amen. And the Bible, did it say, this is Bible. It is say, did it say, divine wrath will become upon, uh, upon demons come to us. It say, Christ and the church won't have what? Being mm -hmm. without God. My friends, my friends, this is a very sad thing. So then, we praise God, Jesus overcome the devil. I wish to tell you that Jesus overcome the devil on the altar court, Jesus overcome the devil in the holy place. But right now that we are talking, there is something at stake. Because Jesus must overcome Satan in the most holy place. And the one who, who, the one who actually is making everything slow is us. Because listen, what is he doing in the most holy place? What is he doing there? The cleansing of the sanctuary. Yes or no? What Jesus claims in there? Sin. Sin. Thank you very much. Please, please, let's not answer. What Jesus claims in there? Sin. My question is, if there is no sin in there, what Jesus can claim? Nothing. Now, my question is, if Jesus had to claim sin, my brother priest, that means I had to give my sin to Jesus. Yes or no? Yeah. We read last night that we need to give our sin to Jesus before it comes. Because if our sin will not go to heaven, something is going to happen to us, which will be me, we will be parents. But right now, there is a new theology that people are teaching that we are going to, to sin until Jesus comes. This is not the Bible teaching. I don't care who is the man who says that, but I know them. I hear them. I talk to them many times. But I'm telling you, the sanctuary, which is our, which is our what? Central pillar of Adventist faith, doesn't teach that. Now, we almost we are, we are, we are now done. Now let, let me show you this. Now we cannot go to this. Now let me show you this. Now this is the Bible say in Leviticus 16, the Bible say, and the scapegoat shall be sent where? By the by the what? But can you read by what? By the fit man. Many people when you read that verse, you think a fit man is a strong man. That what it said? The the evil word for fit man is said is a hitty. Hitty mean what? Timely. So this man who had to send the gold into the wilderness had to go on time, had to be on time. That means when Jesus will crush the head of Satan, it had to be on time. But I'm going to show you that in the Bible. Say, open your Bible. That's the last verse. Last verse is Revelation. Revelation. Uh, revelation. What is Revelation? Now, the actual last verse. Now, I want to read this. Let's read this before we read. Revelation 20. But hold on there. But let's read this one. Let's read it. Let's read it. Please, read this one. It says, what is it? Oh, okay. It says, at the coming of who? Jesus. Please, please, look at this. The earth is talking about the second coming. The earth is what? Empty. Or it's what? The and the what? The whole earth. The whole earth is appearing like what? That's what I do. Now, now talking about what's going to happen when the earth is empty, it says, now, that time, the event takes place for the shadow of the last solemn service of the day of atonement. What is atonement again? Can someone tell me what's atonement? At eight one men. Atonement means eight one men. Atonement means to be one with God. That means in the day of atonement, God wants to take sin out of our life so that we can be one. Because sin is the only thing that separates us from God. Now, notice this. Notice this. Notice this. It says, now, the event of this. It says, when the ministration of the Holy of Holies has been completed, and the sins of Israel has been what? Removed from what? The sanctuary by what? Which of the blood and the sin offering, then the scapegoat was what? Presented their life before the Lord. In the presence of God, the congregation of them and the high priest confess of him. Now, we read already this in the verse 16, verse 21. Now, read with me this. That is the type, this is the anti type. It says, in like manner, when the work of what? The work of what? In the heavenly sanctuary has been what? Completed, then they in the presence of God, in the presence of the, of the heavenly angels, in the presence of the host of the Redeemer, the sins of the devil's people. That what it say? No. That means God's people are sin. Yes or no? Yes. We have seen. It says the sins of God's people will be placed upon the world. Satan. And he will be the 
that I want. Guilt of one month. All the evil which I want. Anytime when you sin, it's the Satan who makes you to sin. Anytime when we sin, the devil is the one who makes us. The Bible says that Satan, I mean, the scripture says, which one? Cause to be what? He caused them to commit. And I said, and as what? The scapegoat was sent away in the land, what? Not in heaven. So Satan will be what? Banished to the isolated world. And then what? Unhabited. And dread what? With the revelator. For a child that what? The banishment of Satan is what? Now, don't you understand? This banishment, which is a chaos, desolation, it's a this condition will exist how long? My friend, if you are not giving your sin to Jesus, that means when Jesus leaves the most holy place, you place the sins upon the head of Satan, and I what? That means if I'm holding on in the sin, I will be lost. But the day of atonement has come that we may give our sin to Jesus. Not tomorrow, but now. Does the Bible say this? Revelation 20. My last verse. Revelation 20. Revelation 20. Let's read together. I didn't show you this last time, but now I have to show you. Revelation 20. My, I, 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 know, I, I cannot exhaust with this. Revelation 20, verse 1. The Bible says, And I saw who? I saw what? I saw an angel. You know many times in the Bible, the Bible presents Jesus' angel. I saw an angel coming down from heaven, having the key. That means when you say key, key is authority. Key is something that gives you authority to open or to not. Remember that the, this book also says Jesus is what? Take the key. key of death. Now it says, as in the key of what? Both my spirit. And a great chain in his hand. That's been an authority. Verse 2. And he lay hold where? Of the dragon. Who is the dragon? That old serpent which one? Is the devil and Satan. And bound him how long? Now the Bible says the same thing. And also the scripture prophet says the same thing. Everything that the prophet said, the Bible says. And everything that the Bible says, the scripture prophet the prophet, the prophet said. My brothers and sisters, if ever there is a time that we need to give our sin to Jesus, it's the man. And listen to me, it doesn't matter if you kill a person. Whatever is the sin that has been done, remember, there is enough blood to split and to cleanse from all our unrighteousness. That's why the Bible says, if, if you, only if you confess your sins, he is faith, he's not unfaithful. He is faithful and just to cleanse us, uh, to forgive us, and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Is that your desire? Mm -hmm. Let us kneel and let us pray. Father, which I have, thank you, Lord, that Jesus overcame the devil on the cross. Though, Lord, he tried to be bruised again. But, Lord, you overcome. And you did all. You suffer all of that. That Satan is done, Lord. You told us in his outrages that those Roman soldiers, they were Satan in person. Oh, dear God, is there anything in our life that we want to hold on, whether it's in, in diet, in dress, in music, in whatsoever it is that we are hold on and we don't want to give to Jesus, Lord, please make us willing that we may give all tonight. Father, we need Jesus. We need the one who died for us, suffered for us, and saved us, oh Lord. But Lord, please, we don't want to perish with the wicked. But we want to give our life right now. And help us, Lord, that we may show to others who truly Jesus is. Lord, we thank you for loving us and for telling us all this, Lord. We thank you for the work of Jesus that is cleansed, that you are cleansing the sanctuary, that you may take the sins and you may use those sins to crush the head of Satan. Lord, we long for this and we delay your work because we are hold on in our selfishness, in our pride, in our, in our all idea. Lord, please, but please take everything but empty us completely of ourselves and please give us Jesus. Thank you. Bring us again, O Lord, tomorrow. We beg you, please. We don't have so much time. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen.
see you tomorrow. Tomorrow, I will not be playing this anymore. I will just speak up for